Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today I have this motor and control board to tear apart. It came out of a washing machine. Just to update those who are interested, if you're wondering about my audio amplifier build video, I have the prototype board laid out and I'll be doing a video on that shortly. But for now, I have this little issue that came up. This came out of my parents washing machine which stopped working. They've decided to buy a new washing machine instead of try to replace this. So uh, when I was at their house I scarfed a bunch of parts out of the machine. Valves, pumps, this motor here. It has a control board on it. You can see here some bad things happened. These windings are darkened they overheated and you can see uh, it burned off the wrapping cord and these uh, these little plastic sleeves that go through the core here kind of melted too so yeah it really overheated the weird thing is the controller board still tries to operate the motor I can see it still try to work it back and forth in agitation mode. So I'm going to pop this apart and see what failed. Did one of the semiconductors fail or I don't know why the the motor would just burn out. But yeah I'll see if I can get to the bottom of this and maybe get some extra parts from this thing. So I'll grab a screwdriver and start tearing it down. Okay, I removed the metal cover that was over the circuit board. And look at that, there's a lot going on there just to control this motor. So what we have here is this board is conformally coated. It's got like a silicone type coating on it. Making sense since it is used inside of a washing machine. We have a full bridge rectifier. Looks like a common mode choke here, fuse, one of those line safety type caps, a couple very large caps here, 820 microfarad, 200 volt, G Luxon, whatever brand that is. On the side here, I disconnected this and checked it with my meter. It appears to be a thermal cutout because it uh, ohms out at zero. When it gets hot it opens. Apparently it didn't do its job very well. Uh, over here we have power devices. Get that in the shot better. Might be uh, ST Microelectronics. They have that little chamfer on the tabs of their TO220 devices. They're marked with a Q number, so they're transistor of some sort, probably FETs. This chip here probably is the driver for these. It says here on the side that it's a three-phase motor, so it obviously would need three separate outputs to drive this motor. The end of the motor shaft sticks through this board and this is a ring magnet. If I put my screwdriver tip on there I can feel it grabbing in certain spots. So this is a Hall effect sensor and it allows the controller to know what the motor is doing. Okay so I will remove this board and uh, take the cover off. the or the clamps off here so I can see these power devices and maybe check them see if any of them are shorted. Okay so I've removed the board from the motor and also took the heat sink off so I have this nice heat sink I can use for something. Throw it in my box of heat sinks. There's the back side this is the connector for the motor. It's a uh, Delta three-phase connection. 
and I called it these are ST microelectronics devices and it happens that they are these IGBT stands for insulated or isolated gate bipolar transistor bipolar junction transistor actually and here's some of the information on these very interesting device it's kinda like a uh, MOSFET driving a standard bipolar junction transistor but of course the uh, it's all on one piece of silicon you see these often used in uh, uninterruptible type power supply. You see a lot of uh, MOSFETs and these things in that type of use. But these have an interesting function. I mean, well, not these, but IGBTs in general. They can be made up to very high voltages and high currents, and they use them for controls in medium power, high voltage DC transmission systems. So, yeah. Pretty interesting. Okay, let's see if I can detect a shorted winding here. If it is shorted, I don't know. Get the meter in the shot, so I'll check across each phase. I'm getting 14.3. Come on, meter. 14.3 again, and... Fourteen point three. So apparently, the motor got hot, but it didn't actually short out. At least at the lower voltages. It doesn't mean the motor is safe to use at operating voltage. But I probably should check since the uh, the uh, insulator is melted, I should check if I'm getting anything, any continuity to ground. This is where a, uh, I think they call them meggers, you can check uh, continuity or isolation with a higher voltage. But the meter says it's open, so motor actually is still good as far as that goes. I might try to make it operate. So, that would mean that one of these devices, or one or two or more of these devices, might be bad. So, I'm going to get the meter on that and see what happens here. See if I can get, I use the component tester to hold my meter. And let's get this in diode mode. Now these have the uh, diode inside of them. The anti-parallel diode. So let's see here. Let's see, make sure you got that. See, it uh, goes open this way. Of course, that's the gate, so there's nothing there. So if I put my negative terminal or probe on the tab and the other on the, oh, would that be the, that'd be the source, wouldn't it? Actually, no, that's the emitter because these are IGBTs. That'll confuse me, I'm sure. So it has a gate, but it has a collector and emitter. So. Yeah, I'm seeing a uh, diode voltage there. So we'll check each one. So that shows a diode voltage. It's like it's charging a cap because it gives me some numbers then goes open. So I'll try this one. There's the diode. Ah. And it goes open. Next one, oops, diode voltage, goes open, 
Yes, I should check the gate as well, but... Hello? Ah, we have a short. Yep, both directions. This one is shorted. Come on. Uh -huh, how about the gate? Getting a diode drop on the gate. That one is bad. How about this guy here? Diode drop. Open. Gates open. So this device here is bad. This is shorted. So it was letting current through and overheating the motor windings. Yep. That is what happened. This device... This IGBT has gone shorted. Here's another interesting little thing I noticed about this board. On the bottom side where the IGBTs are, you can see on the emitter pin, there's this thick trace. And in the thick trace, they made it an area where it's very thin. Those are fuses, so if there was a heavy current, it would open that. So that kind of tells me that the motor didn't short out. It did get hot and burn the windings black. It burned the varnish black, but that's why I still think the motor's good. Because if it continued to get hotter and hotter, eventually the windings would short, heavier current would flow and blow open these little traces here. See here's where the motor plugs in and these lines here which interesting they're not all that thick and they go to the um, collectors of the IGBTs and this is probably the power supply side. So yeah I, I think the motor is still workable. This bench is becoming a disaster again. I need to clean it up. So what I've done here, I'm connecting my Variac to one of the phases here. And since it's a three-phase motor, I think I can make it spin if I put a capacitor from here to this point. It might give enough phase shift. So yeah, this is line operated. You want to be very careful with high voltages, but I jerry-rigged a little circuit here. I took this capacitor off the uh, fan motor in my furnace, just borrowing it. Very easy to get to. I don't think it's the right value I need. It's only five microfarads. But, see what happens here. I, uh, I put a piece of tape on here because it's hard to see this turn. Okay. Bring the voltage up on the variac. There's the current draw. Yeah, it's not doing so good. Oh, there it goes. I can't run it very long. I'll turn it off. We're not getting a very good spin. Yeah, they're a little warm. See, if I take this capacitor off now... Turn it on again, and it's just going to hum. It's not going to spin. So I don't want to run it very long. It gets hot. Okay, so that was fun, just tinkering around and diagnosing a failed washing machine motor and controller board. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.